Hi guys, it's the Macintosh Guide and we're finally going to be booting up the PlayStation 5 Pro. We're going to be installing an SSD in this PlayStation 5 Pro. We're going to be installing a disk drive in this uh, PS5 Pro. And we're also going to be showing you how easy it is if you've got an existing PS5 to get your stuff across to the PS5 Pro with your new SSD. So guys, sit back, relax, and now just enjoy this first boot up of the PS5 Pro. So as you can tell, I've got my controller and everything connected. Let's press the, the start button. And it would make sense if I would have booted up the cable. <laughs> so let's, re let's try that again. There you go. I was supposed to actually press it. My bad. So let's just wait and see. Monitors obviously now turned white. PS4 Pro does look very nice though. It's quite nice and slim. Um, I've also got a stand that I'm going to be showing you how to in install now. It's not an actual official PS5 stand. It's one that I just picked up from Amazon, but it works absolutely fine. So yeah. So we're now on the home screen. And it's telling us to plug the PS5 Pro in, the controller in. Yes, we have United Kingdom. And I'm just going to move the camera, zoom the camera into the screen. So there you go. Nice to have a better view. So yeah, that's absolutely fine. Low power usage. Okay, we agree. And then update the system to use network features and get the most out of your PS5. So yes, let's do that now. And it says it'll be updated. So that's going to take a, couple, a few minutes. So let's just let this one gigabyte update finish and then I'll bring you guys back to this screen. So now that the update file has been done, it's now telling us to press the PS button, which we have. And I have my PlayStation 5 account. So let me get my PS app and scan the QR code. So I go into the PlayStation. So it says to sign in, scan the QR code. You can also sign in via the PlayStation by going into settings and then scan QR code. So I'm going into settings on my app and then I'm going to scan QR code and it's gonna sign me in. And then it says require PS5 login code. Not, not for now, press okay. And it says console sharing on offline. You already have another PS5 with console sharing on offline enabled. Do you want to enable console sharing on this PS5? If you do, anyone who uses people to play your games and media, even when the console is offline, I would like to enable it because I play. I use the PlayStation Portal, and it is a. And it says if you have a PS5 and another PS4 and another, you can transfer your games, save data, and more. To do this, go to settings and uh, always download games from your game library without transferring your your data. So we're going to, we will do this later. And this is welcome to PlayStation 5. I wish I said PlayStation 5 Pro, which would make more sense because this is the Pro model. And there we go. So as you can tell, it's we've got two terabytes of storage on the B on the PS5 Pro, but we're going to put this up to four terabytes because I'm going to install a two terabyte SSD. So that's the console right there. Now, what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to start in, we're going to turn the PS5 Pro off and we're going to be installing an NVMe SSD and our hard drive and then our disk drive, sorry, and then we're going to install the stand and then we have our PS5 Pro pretty much ready to go. So guys, this is the PS5 disk drive. Now, we're gonna be installing this onto our PS5 Pro. So let's just open it up. So it's just a simple matter of us putting the scissors right here. Maybe not, maybe we can just rip it. Can we rip it? Yes, we can. Don't know why I wasted my time with a knife. I'm pretty sure, there you go. I was just being 
an absolute blithering douche. So, as you can tell, the <laughs> come on, PS5. Come on, Disk Drive. Don't want to be ripping you. It's not great, is it? We can't even open it up, guys. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we got that. We got that. All right, so I hate when it's stuff like this because what happens is it rips. And this is one thing I really, really hate about PlayStation is they put packaging, which is pretty much impossible to keep intact. So let me get this out and then we'll continue the video. All right, so we finally got here now. Let's open it up. As you can tell, this is useless. It ripped. I tried to keep my packaging intact as much as I can. But clearly, that wasn't going to happen. Now, PlayStation's got some fancy, fancy packaging. These are the clips. If you're using the disk drive, you have to use these clips. Now, I'm not sure if my stand is going to work with this console now. So I am a little worried. Um, but let's just see what happens. And I'm just going to quickly turn some lighting on, guys, so you guys can have a better picture. So, yeah, there you go. There's better lighting. So this seems to be, okay, so this is the PS5 Pro's uh, cover for the disk drive, so we're good with that. So I'm just going to put that on the side for the time being, because we're not going to need it right now. And then we've also got the main drive system. And we've also got a booklet, but we don't need that right now. So let's just quickly unwrap this. So this is the PS5 Slim and PS5 Pro's disk drive. As you can see, it's, it uses this connector, which identifies the console. So that's, that's pretty cool. So guys, let's get straight into getting this installed on our PS5 Pro. So what you'll need to do is where you see the PlayStation 5 logo on the bottom, that's the side you'll need this console on, not the side where the PlayStation no logo is. is is facing so we don't need it to be where the playstation 5 logo is so what we need to do there's two ways to do it you can either lift it from the bottom and unclip it or another suggestion is you put it on your side like this you pull on this top corner and you'll hear click happening so it's just a simple matter of boom it's way easier than it was for the ps5 um and there you go, so we now see this beautiful area. Now all we need to do is get our disk drive, as you see right here. And we just need to line everything up. So where you see the pin over the pin over right there, just kind of need to Boom, everything's all in place. Nothing's jiggling, we're good. And then it's just a simple case of us having to put the cover back on and we're good to go. But what we now need to do is we need to get this cover back on. So what you see is there's two clips here that we need to line up over here. So all we need to do is line the clips up as I've done here. As I've not done here, I'm just making sure that it is inside, which I believe it is not. Give me a second, guys. It's always difficult to do this while you're recording. But as far as I am aware, it's a simple case of sliding it in and then just going from one corner. And that's it. This drive has now been installed, guys. So all we now need to do is, is get our M.2 SSD and install it in this section here. So let me get my PS5 and unravel the SSD and then we'll shove it all in here. So now that we've got our M.2 2TB SSD, all we now need to do is turn the console around where the disk drive slot is facing the other way. We pull on this part and the cover comes off brilliantly. 
Now, where you see this section, I'm going to zoom straight in as much as I can. And all we need to do is get a screwdriver, put it in to this slot here. Just slowly unravel the screw and just lift out the tray. And as you can tell, there's a screw already inside. All we need to do is just open up the screw. And you see that there's already inside a little holder for the SSD that we can leave inside the slot here. And we just need to slide our SSD into the slot that's shown here. And boom, SSD has been installed. And all we need to do is put the little visor in here let's just make sure it's done properly there you go and then all we need to do is get the screw put it back in and screw it into place as such Obviously make sure you're not straining the SSD by any chance because that's the last thing you'd want it to do. And now that SSD is secure, we just put this side panel straight back in as shown here. Oh, wrong way around. Shown right here. And then we just need to put this screw back in and use a screwdriver to just mold it back straight into place. Boom, and that's not going anywhere. So once that you've got the SSD installed, what I suggest is turn the console around, which will make your life easier. And then you need to line the back end of the clips. As you can see here, you line it up. And then it's a simple case of just clipping in from this side and then just applying a bit of force boom we're good to go ssd installed and that's pretty much how you get the console running now we're going to be doing this live test now to see if our playstation 5 pro is going to allow us to use the stand the aftermarket stand that we've purchased so guys let me get that and see how that goes. So, this is the, the vertical stand that we purchased. Now I got this from Amazon for about 12 quid, half the price of what PlayStation sell it for. Now it's not an official product by or endorsed by Sony. However, it's compatible. So we'll see how that goes. Now I've got the items right here. So let's just quickly get it out. So we see that there's a PlayStation 5 stand. I think that's a two-parter. Yeah, that's a two-parter. And then we've got the customized screw that is for the PlayStation 5 Pro. So what we need to do is we'll need... There you go. So that comes out. As far as I am aware, this is the section that will fit the PlayStation 5 Pro. So let us shift the PlayStation 5 Pro a little bit. Let's put it on its axes if we can. And then we'll just need to line this up with the PlayStation 5 Pro. And as far as I'm aware, it's meant to be the other way around. Nope, it is meant to be this way. 
And there you go. So if you could see, the holes are lining up. So let's get the screw. I'm just gonna put the place in five on its other side. When I get the screw out, if it comes out, there you go. And it should just be a simple matter of us having to put the screw into the hole. Now I do realize the stand does seem a little loose. And I'm not sure if it's because I need to tighten this screw even more. And I will get that sorted out in a second. But just to show you guys, this is what the stand makes the PlayStation 5 look as. It looks pretty good. It does look like it's more jaded to one side, but I guess it's because of the fact that the disk drive comes into action. So it makes it look a little weird, but that's understandable. I am not so overly fast. I wanted a stand for the PlayStation 5 Pro. We've got it. So let me just tighten everything up guys and then we shall boot the playstation 5 pro up so the true test is now will the playstation 5 pro boot up yes it does and i will get a cd disc in a minute so that we can try it out the light turns on let's just see what the first screen it shows us i'm just going to bring it a little closer to the monitor rebuilding databases let's see what that does and yeah i mean guys overall it's it's beautiful looking don't get me wrong the playstation 5 pro is an amazing looking console um but i just don't understand the dynamics of you know what's going on so now it's updating your disk drive so that's interesting so it seems to have recognized that it says it's connected to the PS5 to use the disk drive, register it to your PS5, press OK. Now it's registering the device. It says you can now use the, the disk drive with your PS5. Brilliant. So that's all sorted out. And I just want to zoom in over here. And boom, we're right in. And it's obviously started to download my games. I presume this is from the disk drive I'm not quite sure where it's downloading this from but it seems to be downloading oh it's updates okay so it's downloading the updates and let's just have a look like what does it recognize any of the games I have m.2 storage it does recognize it games and apps it does recognize it now, how do I play these? Interesting. I'm not sure how you play these. I shall find that out quite quickly, but I presume it's within my game library. I'll need to put the disc in. So I'm just trying to find a game that I can play without the disk drive. Uh, what games do I have that I can play without the disk drive? Lego 2K Drive? It works, cool, brilliant. So it's just plug and play guys. Very, very easy, very, very quick. So I'm happy with that. And that was instantaneous. So let's close that. And it shows up, so guys, it works. It works great. And let's just have a look again at that storage. So let's go back into storage. So PlayStation 5 has two terabytes and we've also got two terabytes on the Samsung. So we've got about 200 gigs free. That's brilliant. It just plug and play works. So I'm happy with that, the disk drive. Now let me just get a quick, let me just get one of my games and see how that works. So what do I think of the PlayStation 5 Pro so far and how easy it was to get the peripherals to be attached. Now, the PlayStation 5 Pro is a magnificent machine. Now, it's magnificent for those people who really have the equipment necessary, such as the 4K or the 8K TVs, for them to no notice such minor differences. Now, some games like GT7 
um, Horizon Dawn, etc. There's a few games out there that will support the 120 FPS. So far, I've not seen, I've not got any games that do have it, um, or I've not really noticed a huge difference. The other thing is, the PlayStation 5 Pro is for a very niche market, I think, in my opinion. It's going to be for those people who, again, really want the best system out there. It is powerful, don't get me wrong. It does a lot of upscaling with AI. It, it, it is a tremendous device. But when I notice something on my day-to-day, -day, now what games do I play on a, on a regular basis? I play games which probably aren't going to be that power-hungry. Um, so I actually would be absolutely fine with just a standard PS5. But if I had the opportunity to buy a PS5 Pro, I'm going to go for it. I don't think it's worth the the £700 price tag it has, especially when you only get a, a silly standard controller. They should have included the Edge controller. And they should have included the drive. And they should have included the stand. That would make the purchase... That PS5 Pro would be selling twice as fast as what it currently, current, what it currently is. So, there's that. Now, in terms of some of the improvements I do like about the PS5 Pro, it's way easier to get the get these panels off. Before, it used to be an absolute hassle to get these panels off. So I'm very happy that they made that easy. It's just simply pulling up and pop, 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 it's out, and then simply just clip, clipping it back into place. So I'm happy about that. Very easy to put the disk drive in, very easy to put the M.2 SSD in, and it just works out of the box, as you saw. Overall, PlayStation 5 Pro is a great device, but only if you need it. If you've got the money, be my guest, spend the money. If you don't have the money, you will not notice much of a difference between a PS5 and a PS5 Pro. So guys, Actors Guide, signing out. Plenty of other videos coming along the way, so stay tuned for that. And I've also got a lovely Mac Mini coming along. So sit back, guys, and I hope you enjoyed this long video.